So like I said, kind of irritating that I was either shorted or lost it. I'll probably say I lost it because being short in the package is kind of rare. You know, I kind of looked all over. This is the box that came in. I looked in the box. So, I don't know. It happens. Welcome back, everybody. Today is head reassembly day. I'm going to go ahead and get this all put back together. New valve seals, put the lifters back in, and get the head back on with the new head gasket. And we'll start putting the top end back together. So we're going to take the valve seal. And of course, I can't find my tripod, so I'm doing this one-handed. We'll get this kind of down in its spot. I have a socket that fits over the outside edge of it about perfectly. I just push down on it. And there it sits. Um, you can see that, oh, there you go. Yeah. Come on, focus. Yeah, just like a little rubber seal cover. A little friction fit over the uh, valve guide. And it doesn't take much to push it up and over on top of it. Like I said, just kind of get it sorted in place. And then just push it on there. First set valves in. I'm going to use my uh, valve tool, homemade uh, spring depressor. And then, as you've seen before, this is how I have my valves organized so they get back in the same place. So we're going to go ahead and start putting these back together. So you don't want the valves getting pushed down. So what you'll have to do is take some paper towels so it has something to push against so you're not pushing it down into the table. And what I had found to be a good process for putting these keepers on is I have a magnetic tip screwdriver. And then I'll put a little bit of grease on the keeper side. And that way it pulls it off the magnet, but also sticks in place until you're done. So here we go. Got one of the valves done. You can kind of see how the grease is sticking out of the keepers. Uh, helps keep them there while you get the valve retainer uh, seated back in place. That way the keepers don't fling out of there. So I'm going to take a moment here and see if I can kind of explain how this works. And that way you have an idea when you're putting it back together. This is the valve stem. And this is the keeper. And you can see that they have got a matching set of grooves on them. And what you're trying to do is match them up. There's three steps in this groove and there's three steps in the valve keeper and they match up perfectly. There is a big side and a small side because it's on a taper. Make sure you get them seated in there in the correct orientation, taper side down. So the thick parts at the top right here, I'm showing you that if you were to get it seated incorrectly, how it sticks out quite a bit at the top, that would make it so the valve retainer, can't seat all the way. It would look quite weird because this would come sticking out the top. Right here would be an example of a, a valve put in correctly. Uh, you can see that it's concentric all the way around the top and that it's properly seated all the way down to the keeper. So far I got two cylinders done. I'm moving on and I got to find either the valve seal that I dropped or maybe they shorted me and I'll have to buy another set unfortunately. I opened up the bag and I Put them all on and ended up one short. So either I dropped it or I got shorted. So anyways, that's where we're at. Don't forget your oil drain back uh, to put it back in there. However, make sure you clean this thing out really, really good. Mine was completely coked up. Was not really in good shape. All right. Well, slightly irritated because I am a valve seal short. Open the package and poured it out right here. And I put them on one at a time and noticed I was short. Uh, thought maybe I dropped it. It's entirely possible. I looked all over the place. I can't find it. So I'll have to order another one. Kind of irritating. Oh, well, it's how it goes sometimes. But, uh, we are, we're ready to put the block back in. So I'll go ahead and get it mounted up inside there. Uh, get it mounted to the bell housing. So like I said, kind of irritating that I was either shorted or lost it. I'll probably say I lost it because being short in the package is kind of rare. 
you know, I kind of looked all over. This is the box that came in. I looked in the box. So, I don't know. It happens. All right, slight little update. We have the block attached. Uh, we got the uh, flywheel or flex plate on. Got the uh, bolts torqued down. Got the stop back in, and we are back up to top dead center. I'd say one of the more irritating things to deal with on this project is the fact that you get seals, and it doesn't say what it's for, and neither does the description of when they sell you the parts. But anyways, uh, this guy right here, part number on this would be BM5Z8527A. And for the main cover, 6M5Z68752 Alpha. There's a little indexing tit right here. You just slip that in place and then just fit the rest of the gasket so you don't have to worry about putting it in the wrong way, backwards, upside down, etc. Nice part about this piece is all the bolts are actually captured in the housing. So I just get it semi lined up and get them all kind of started and then put them in my hand. These are very little bolts. Uh, hand tight's fine. I mean, a little over hand tight, but. Just do it with hand tools. You don't need to run them in with any electric tools. Let's go ahead and move on to the front side. Do the water pump. Uh, I got a new gasket for this with a part number of BE8Z8507 Alpha. Um, at this point, if you didn't do a water pump, I think you'd be pretty silly. It's a pretty involved project. So just do it at this point. Actual uh, gasket is doweled on the water pump side. So it fits on there pretty easily. Can't mess it up. And here's your water pump number. DS7Z8501 Edward. Got new water pump bolts. W713043S437. You'll need six of these. Typically I do water pump bolts because uh, usually they're on the corroded side. Um, I don't think there's any pass throughs on this, so it's probably why they're in good shape when I took them off. Got them anyways. Not a very big bolt. Not really worth all the hassle. Same story as that front little evac cover. These aren't very big bolts, so definitely put them in by hand, and then kind of how I'm holding the ratchet up on the head. Uh, you don't need any actual torque on this. Just kind of put them in there and just give them a little, uh, that's good enough. Now that we got everything kind of set up, we're going to go ahead and put our uh, starter bridge back in to lock in the flywheel. So let's go ahead and get the timing assembly started here. Got the lower gear on. Now we're going to get the uh, crank pulley put in, and then the little timing window. For your crank sensor, it just kind of pops in place. And then there's a little uh, timing tool in the kit. And you just put that on the front little bolt-in area. There's a dowel for an indicator, and then you bolt it in place. And just keep turning the crank pulley until she drops into place. And you'll know, because it'll lock it right in there. With well, the part number of BE8Z6A340A. And this gets torqued on, holy Jesus, tight. Yeah, as always, thanks for watching. I usually post a couple times a week. Make sure you tune back in, like, share, subscribe. We'll catch you on the flip flop.